Yay, Miss Ikri. <laughs> Can't you disappoint? How are you so predictable? I was counting down in my mind, you know. Uh, you know there's, there's, oh. actually, there's actually a drum beat that goes before you before we shout, Yay, Kri. So I do, I do the beat in my head first before I will sound a lot. Otherwise, you don't get the energy with it. It's a fantastic Monday morning. The first day of the month that we are in the studio for uh, News Hub. So, well, happy new month. And many happies along the way, uh, beginning from happy Workers' Day, also to as a public holiday all across the country. Mm -hmm. uh, what else yeah. again? Sure. And of course, World Press Freedom Day. Uh -huh. It is one day set aside to celebrate our day. The, our, 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 not day. Even like a, our, our day. day. Yeah. No respect for speech or any kind of anything this morning. <laughs> no, no phonology. <laughs> Our day. Um, it, it's amazing. One of these greatest days to be alive and do what you love to do. Yeah. However, we mustn't, before we go to World's Press Freedom Day, let's congratulate all workers. It's workers it was Workers' Day, May the 1st, and the federal government of uh, Nigeria deemed it fit to give uh, one day, like a Monday, to workers to also enjoy the enjoyment at home, uh, so to speak. Um, I know that mo top, of, top most on the list will be issues of, uh, uh, let's say, uh, workers' welfare, wages, remunerations, the strikes, the actions, the strike actions we've seen between government and labor, uh, still on the minimum wage. Um, I did hear the Minister for uh, uh, Employment and Labour increasingly saying that any state government that is not paying the minimum wage right now is contravening the law. Uh, but the question is how many states' uh, workers are enjoying uh, the new minimum wage? So many talks around that. But all the same, we wish you a very happy Workers' Day. We do pray and hope that uh, it will be uh, an end to where government and labor would, would always come at each other yeah. over labor issues. So enjoy your day, and then we'll come back to Press Freedom Day. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We're going to have a fine array of guests this morning. Don't go anywhere. You know, the number one breakfast, news and breakfast show in the country. We're going to let you into all of the big information and details. Number the, the, the information at the bottom of the screen is for you to uh, join Silver News Hub, the uh, hashtag News Hub. Silver News 24 rather is our handle on Twitter. Uh, News Hub is a hashtag that you can send us comments and questions, suggestions. We'd love to hear from you uh, beginning from now. I hope, hope you also had a fantastic weekend. We, you know, we did our little bit here and there. And uh, I spent my entire time online. What doesn't matter if I, begin, if I begin discussion what happened online over the weekend. We won't leave here today. But it's a discussion for, um, for, for another time. We'll, get, we'll, definitely, uh, we'll definitely get into that most, most likely tomorrow. So... Um, the World Press Freedom Day is something that um, I, I see the thing for this year's event is uh, for the public good, information for the public good. And we all have been um, looking at the numbers of people who've been arrested, who've been jailed, uh, those who've been killed, unfortunately, in the line of duty as journalists in pursuing, uh, in pursuing freedom for, for press. So I, for example, have suffered um, um, uh, um, attacks, assault from state actors non-state actors, non-state actors in this country during the uh, election campaign went around to a group of thugs and they had machetes and sticks and came after me, thankfully, just sustained a couple of injuries here and there and then. I was off work for a number of weeks. Uh, of the country, I remember in Burundi where the government of um, Pierre Nkuruziza seized my passport and told my cameraman that um, we're going to take all your gadgets and if you don't tell us what you're doing here, uh, we're going to um, charge you for a, n a number of... Um, offenses but thankfully we came through on that one and um, we're here today and you know so a lot of people a lot of us have to go through this on a daily basis trying to put out information uh, so that people can get better you know for themselves so that's that's the the problem we have to deal with as journalists they say it's the terrain we have to work in but I see some bright light at the end of the tunnel a lot of having to do with what is going on with uh, social media because of social media We've sort of um, liberalized the information space. So people talk about the good and the bad. But now, people tell me nowadays that even when we know, we know you contemporary media guys won't tell us everything because of setting rules and regulations, because we are governed you know, by the Broadcasting Commission, for example, uh, which has a code of ethics for setting things. And sometimes it's a big debate on exactly where, it's, where it begins and where it ends and how information is disseminated. On social media, it's all out there for you, you know, and then uh, they tell you exactly um, the ones you want to hear yeah. and the ones you don't want to hear. Absolutely. You pick and choose. Oh, well, you know, it, most people are not 
uh, doing what they want to do. But for yeah. some of us who are lucky enough to be blessed to be doing what we enjoy doing, uh, not just doing something that people may not even know how it feels, but things that change people's lives and yeah. give people uh, you know, the information they need to take the correct decisions at all times. Yeah. So it's an amazing time, uh, especially uh, when you look around the world, it's not only limited to Nigeria, the issue of fre press freedom. The question is, is the press freedom indeed in play, not only in Nigeria, but in other parts of the world? And the question is coming because most of the times governments across uh, the globe would say, well, you're free to talk. In fact, in Nigeria, there's freedom of information bill, which you can access and get the information that you need. However, how free are you to really um, express yourself and represent the things you've seen to the letter, the truth of it all, because that's the essence of uh, communication with people. And we also heard that some, in some instances, a couple of days ago, we did get a report that some journalists were uh, assaulted in a part of the country. Actually, we thought that one of our guys were there, yeah, was there, but yeah. we heard that he wasn't there. Mm. Still in this country, this just towards the end of last month, I want to believe. Mm. So uh, sometimes some, some journalists will tell you that they get threats. Yes, yes. They're threatening that. That story that we saw you, mm. you know, break, if you continue on it, yeah. I mean, we, we hardly ever come out to talk yeah. about, especially our guys in the print media, in the, in the, in the broadcast, the electronic media, maybe most of the times people can see what is going on uh, and um, they can stand for us, so to speak. But yeah. the print, our guys the print media have a lot of things to share with you if you ask them. And it's been our pleasure to have us uh, have with us this morning someone that really, I'm sure, can't wait to talk about press freedom and perhaps some of her experiences in the course of our, our journey. Uh, she's an author as well as a journalist. If you're able, if it's so nice to have you on News Hub and happy Press Freedom Day. Thank you so much for having me, Shil and Aowo, and um, happy Press Freedom Day. Um, and to all workers, um, I want to say, I just hope that they had a wonderful workers' day. I really do not understand why governments would decide that today will be a public, aren't we tired of sitting at home? Are we not tired of public holidays as it is? For a country that stayed how many months at home talking about the uh, lockdown and all of that. Yes, what I say was on the 1st of, uh, of May was the weekend. Why wouldn't it just be like that and let people get back to their normal lives on a Monday? But that's fine. Some might like it. They want to stay home and truly rest. But we need to take a look at while well, we talk about press freedom, that's fine. But I also want to talk about the issue having to do with workers. I think that government needs to truly look at the welfare of workers. <clears throat> Excuse me. Look at the welfare of workers and um, understand what it is that they are going through. I was asking a question. How do you have people who have been owed salaries come out on Workers' Day to wave at the person who's owing them salaries? That's a question that I, I don't expect that two of you will have answers to. But then we need to look at the issues because the Nigerian worker, if you look at it, um, I don't think they're a happy set of people because of the things they are going through. But that's by the wayside. If we talk about the World Press Freedom Day, I'm just hoping we'll go into that conversation um, in a short while. I think we also need to understand what it is, information for the public good. What is our role as media persons? What are we putting out there? I will go just talked about the idea of social media, you know, now becoming an open space. Some of the things you can't talk on STV and indeed some other TV stations and radio stations, you find it right there in the open market, if you want me to call it that, that's on social media. And that's why people now tend to believe what they see on social media, because they believe that no one is censoring what it is that's there. So they go in there, pick what they want, take it in and process the information. So we truly need to be careful the kind of things that we put out. All right, uh, Ify. So um, there's, there's something a lot of people are also talking about. Um, what, what, what do you make? Um, we, we have an increasing space in the, in, the, in the media, unfortunately, but not enough space to wiggle out of regulations oftentimes. Uh, so increasingly, we are not only just self-regulating content, we're also having to play a double role in deciding, for example, what we think, for ex what we think uh, is for the good of the people. The thing for this year is information for the public good, and then decide that this is for the public good. Uh, on the other hand, we are thinking of uh, the regulatory body 
hoping that we don't in any way, you know, um, step out of bound. But, but in reality, oftentimes, people have asked, aren't we overdoing it in terms of what we can, we can do as uh, journalists or even editors? Um, when you talk about overdoing it, I truly do not understand. I, I can't put a tab on that. But if I, um, if I want to put meaning to that, overdoing it, um, are you meaning uh, that we're putting out information that we're not supposed to put out or we're not giving out enough and the right information? Maybe you need to put a tab on that for me. Right. Um, well, most of the time, is people don't really have an idea what we have to go through in collating information. In fact, getting an exclusive is almost uh, almost non-existent now. Or else, you have to dig into the deep and have your networks, which is what we love to do all the time. However, let's talk about the way a journalist ourselves have been able to comport ourselves over the years. I remember a couple of months ago, there was a, a movement that was supposed to ask that if you were not a trained journalist, that you shouldn't be practicing journalism. What's your view of the generality of journalists, practicing journalists in the country, especially with regards to obeying all the principles that really guide the profession? Um, that, that idea of saying to people, if you're not a professional journalist, you shouldn't practice journalism, I may not align with that. That's the truth. There's something called citizen journalism. But anyone who wants to go that way, it's important for you to find someone who will mentor you or you go get training for that. That's the truth. If you ask me, journalism is one profession that has become like an all-commerce affair. When people look for jobs they don't get or they're out of school, and the jobs don't come, they just find themselves, they jump into broadcasting or jump into journalism as it is. So the profession exactly has been bastardized. That's the truth. But the professional journalists in Nigeria, I want to give it to them. They are doing their best in the strictest, the tight. How do I even put it? I need that adjective to qualify what it is that these people are doing. You find that people work in places where they don't get paid a salary, but they chase the story to the deepest hole and get it out for you and feed the public what it is that the public should know. I think they should be praised. They should be giving that pat on the back for doing a great job. For those who have jumped into the business or jumped into the profession as it is, you will always know when you see a story that's written by a non-professional, as professionals, you will pick the holes in that story. And that's the truth. They're always in a hurry to just break the news. They never go out to ask the other side. You need to get the other side of the story, whatever story it is that you're doing. Get the other side, put the two sides together, serve it to the public, and allow the public make their own decisions or conclusions uh, on that matter. But you don't see that today. People are always in a hurry. They just find something. They copy it. They paste it there. They don't even change the date. Something happened like three, four days ago. You go copy it where the person wrote it, and it says breaking news. You copy it like that, and you put it four or five days after, you still have the breaking news there. Because you don't have the editing skills. There's something called rehashing a story. There's something called rewriting a story. You need to add life into a story by shipping some things without changing the meat of that story. But not every uh, person will understand that, except people who are trained to write stories. So the journalists who are trained, the professional journalists, they are doing a great job. But you know what social media has actually uh, turned the space into? Once you have a smartphone and um, there's data on your phone, you sit in one corner of your house and you're churning out stories and people are reading you and people are hailing you. And you find that advertisers go to where the clicks are, whether the story is true or not. As long as people rush there and click on that story, they call it the eyes. That's what the advertisers want to see. They go to these people. You find that when there are events, serious events, you find advertisers or find even people who organize events, they go to non-professionals, people who call themselves journalists and broadcasters. They go to them, invite them. And these people come do all sorts of stories. So they neglect the people who are trained to do this job. And I think it's a very wrong thing because they are just gradually sending uh, the profession to its grave. And it's something that uh, I think the professionals need to come together and decide how to save this very noble profession, which is something that I think 
uh, is, is supposed to be close to the people, giving them exactly what information that they need and helping them, you know, decide how it is that they want to process it. And, and, and it rings so true, especially when you realize that John, uh, we as journalists, we written into the Nigerian constitution and have a role to play uh, according to uh, chapter 2, um, I think subsection 22 of the Nigerian Constitu constitution. But, but tell us something also too, mm -hmm. this, this clickbait thing is happening all on, on, so, on social media and we probably have had our own American moment where uh, the most trusted people in the United States at some point in time were stand-up comics and not even the news media. Uh, more and more you see people mm -hmm. going to social media for the information or going to um, uh, micromedia social messaging uh, messaging apps for their news day to day but help us also understand the COVID-19 period came in came in with a lot of challenges and also came with opportunities and they saw how the media space was liberalized and everyone suddenly now has, has seen the further liberalization of the media in a way that we have not seen before and probably we won't get you know worse or we get, we get better um, the, 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 the biggest challenge, the debate we talk about oftentimes has been with uh, fake news and, um, and how it's affecting um, the, the freedom of the press. Uh, we can't seem to draw the lines because increasingly it's getting you know, gray on, on every side to you know exactly what is the truth, what is fact, and what is real news or what is fake news, um, Ify. Um, the issue of fake news uh, is something that we can't just wish away by the snap of our fingers. That's the truth. As long as there's internet, people have data on their smartphones and they have time and they probably have access to information. They will go to markets with it without checking out what information it is, where it's coming from, whether it's true. I'm sure that a lot of bodies, and I'm happy that a lot of organizations have decided to give us sites where people go to check out um, what it is, whether that news is fake or whether it is genuine or where it is that it's coming from. But how many people take the pain to go check out news or verify news on these sites? Not many people will do that. Not many people know. I, I don't want to mention names, but there are persons who you wonder where these people are coming from. When bloggers even need to write about these people, they use the words journalists. I even saw one, they put veteran journalists. And I'm wondering, where is this person coming from? What kind of thing is it that this person is doing, that you attach this to that person's name? But that's exactly what it is that's going on. We need to understand that this is a profession that people need to be trained. I'm putting something together that has to do with fake news as it is. And I'm just hoping that we're able to reach somewhere with that conversation, because we need to understand that fake news is deadly. It can actually break things. It can stoke a fire. It can start reprisal attacks here and there. And we need to continue in the job that we do to let people understand that it's important for you to verify stories. How do you do that? You can find someone who is a professional. If this person has not shared that story, there are people I go to their pages to check it out. Is it true? Has it happened? I have numbers of people that I call, even as a journalist. When I hear something or a story comes to me, I call this person to say, is it true? And when they say to me, if it is true, but you need to dig deeper, I go and I dig and I come out with the story. But not everyone would do that. But we need to begin to push that for people to understand why it's important to always go the extra mile. If he, it's amazing. Someone would say in the military, there is hierarchy. When you get enlisted, you know yes, there is a countdown to where you could go, especially when it has to do with other prerequisite conditions, so to speak. If, for instance, if That's you got right. enlisted in 1990, and um, by the time you are 10 years in the military, 12, 15 years, you're a veteran. You're a veteran. But in broadcasting, in general journalism, you don't even have any, there's no hierarchy. You've been working for the past 30 years, but it's working two years, and there is nothing that aligns with that. And because we had that in our own time, it helped us really to be able to grow along the same way. Anyway, before we leave that, let's talk about President Muhammad Buhari. He congratulated the, the, the journalists on the World Press Freedom Day. Let me quote him. Uh, the president says, on the occasion of World Press Freedom Day, uh, President Buhari recommits to freedom of press and urges media professionals to wield freedom responsibly and without licentiousness. 
so to speak. And this, uh, of course, was released by uh, his you know, uh, the senior, uh, uh, special advice on media and publicity. That's uh, Femi Additional. What do you see when the pre with this president's statement? That's just uh, the headline, so to speak. Uh, how would you resp uh, resp uh, respond to that? Do you think that, uh, for instance, uh, he feels that some <laughs> journalists have not been reporting responsibly um, without even some recourse to what we have to do to ensure that it is highly professional? Uh, you just said uh, some journalists. Uh, he could be right, you know. N not everyone is doing the right thing. You and I understand that, but so between you and I, I would rather re uh, respond when I see a president who speaks to me, you know, do a video or do a live. Don't tell me what Femi Adeshino says or what Garba Shehu says, and you want me to react to that. I would rather, you know, keep my, uh, I'll keep my reaction to myself. But be that as it may, um, the president will not be wrong to say that there are some people who are not doing the job right. It's left for those who are not doing it right to understand that so much is expected of them. When I was growing in the profession as a 17-year-old uh, on IT at the Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, the, the profession was such a very, it, it was a noble one. It was wonderful. You wanted to be part of the, of the company as it is. When I talk about company, I mean you wanted to be part of uh, the journalists, the people who are doing the job, the broadcasters. But today, you're even ashamed at some point to call yourself a journalist, except you travel outside the shores of the country. And that's when people respect you. Oh, she's a journalist from Nigeria. People look at you and they want to see that thing in you, how you report stories. They want to hear you talk about your country. But here in Nigeria, you call yourself a journalist. People just look at you. Of course, all they think about is brown envelopes. And I say to them, not everyone thinks that way. People come to do their jobs. They do the job and they walk away. If you decide to appreciate a journalist, you won't lump everyone together to say, these are brown envelope journalists. So whatever the president is thinking, I hope he understands that the box stops on his table. How does he want to make it right for the people? How is he talking to his men who represent him in the different states across the nation to understand that journalism is a noble profession? The people must be paid their wages. How does he impress it on people who run media organizations to say to them, you have to find a way to meet the needs of the people who do this job. So many conversations need to come up when it comes to the issue of journalists and the way that they are treated. Yeah. And I think people need to just do the right thing. Thank you so much, Ife, journalist and author. Thank you so much for being part of uh, the program today. You're still with us. We'll take a very short break. When we come back, uh, we have the focus of the day that just went by. We talk about the quote of the day. And of course, the newspapers are here. Uh, we talk about the front page stories in a moment. Do stay with us. back and uh, wall, uh, we're away from the World Press Freedom Day. We're looking at the papers, the headlines. Uh, we've got several dailies this morning. If you're equally uh, still here with us, then we are going to look at them one after the other. Uh, the stories run all the way from labor to security. So here we go. The Nigerian News Direct is where we kick off from. Uh, big story on Nigerian News Direct. Minimum wage federal government threatens to sue 
errant state governments. Uh, it's um, the background of celebrations that happened, well, more, more like um, commemorations that happened over the weekend where the, uh, Labor, where the Labor Day happened, and there's been the biggest talk about how many states haven't met with the uh, new minimum wage requirements yet. Federal government offers five NIPP power stations for sale. Um, can't measure up, so we'll have to hit the door. On insecurity, no time to play to the gallery, APC tells PDP governors. Nigeria records 8.41 billion US dollars in investments in the first quarter of uh, 2021. That's Nigeria Investment uh, Promotion Council speaking here. Above the banner, I stand for unity of Nigeria. Bol Ahmed Tinubu, former governor of Lagos State, uh, national leader of the All Progressive Congress, has been speaking recently. Abuja is not under terrorist attack. It's the police who quoted the above the banner still. And then National Assembly will never pass law against press freedom. Ahmed Lawan, president of the Senate, quoted here. We get all the stories and more than Nigerian News Direct. And then let's see the cover page of the nation newspaper today. Uh, the biggest story here, APC, PDP, clash over worsening insecurity. And uh, what Buhari's dream by ruling party. You also see policemen, agency chief killed in Kogi, Eboi. And uh, we need US-UK rescue mission, says Governor Sule. A Christian Association of Nigeria can seeks urgent action. Get all the sides of this story when you turn to, into, to page six of the paper. And above the name page, the one worrisome story to many over the weekend, lady applicants raped, killed, buried in Uyo, police exhumed body. And you can get the details on page four of the paper. Uh, governor to reveal a warrior tax mastermind. That's on page seven. And uh, Nigeria better together, says Tunubu. And so many other stories. The DSS warns against threats to security. And um, Labour queries any RC parameters for tariffs review. Uh, these are many more inside the nation on Monday. All right, next up is the punch. And um, the vaccine dilemma is uh, what is before us this morning. The federal government vaccine fund runs into crisis as AstraZeneca's scarcity uh, hits India. Um, story says Nigeria may go for Pfizer, which costs $20 per dose. AstraZeneca costs $4. Uh, how, do you, how do you work out the differentials here? WHO may review usage of expired COVID-19 vaccine for Nigeria and others. There's a protest in Akwaibom as a fake recruiter um, has killed, will kill a job seeker. It's a big story online over the weekend. Uh, Fanny Ferry was, was right by refusing to support Buhari. Pastor Ronti was is the one who's speaking here. And we've been servicing our first bank loan, says Honeywell. Uh, the drama continues over um, the crisis that hit the country's the first lender bank. And then NUJ kicks as Benway justifies arrest of uh, journalists. Interesting, World Press Freedom Day we talked about and we're still talking about. We saved 45 northern youth from mob attack, and this is in Ondo State. And then above the banner with the punch, a quiet bomb office attack, burning 345 ballot boxes, threatens uh, the 2023 polls. This is from INEC. And then the minimum wage, Chris Ngige, the Minister of Labor, is consulting the Attorney General of the Federation, is threatening to sue uh, state governors who haven't done what they should do. Bent price slides, petrol landing costs hit 199.9 uh, naira per litre. It's almost imminent now that uh, if you don't get the subsidy running, then probably would have a hike in the cost of pump price of petrol. Get the stories and more in The Punch. All right, uh, from The Punch now, let's go to Daily Times today. And the biggest story here, power firms for sale, consumers to pay higher tariffs from July. You can get the details on page two of the paper. And um, press freedom, Buhari reaffirms commitment to press freedom, urges respect for ethics. That continues on page nine. COVID-19, federal government bans India, Brazil, Turkey visitors from entering Nigeria. You can get the continuation of that story on page five of the paper. So many other stories when you uh, check out the paper today.
All right, so we can begin to have a look at um, the analysis um, straight away. So, if he, we have um, a number of stories all the way from labor to um, a vaccine fund crisis over the AstraZeneca, but is there, is, I, I, we haven't heard you say anything about the labor uh, day yet. It would be good to hear what you have to say. With the, with the Minister <laughs> of Labor, Chris Ngige, threatening to sue state governors who are not paying the, minim, the new uh, uh, minimum wage. Hmm. Um, the issue of labor, we've um, talked about this over and over, and it seems like we're sounding like a broken record. I do not understand why it's difficult for some people to pay. Remember, even the Holy Book says that the worker deserves his wages. Now you owe people salaries. Some are saying they're not able to pay the minimum wage. Where were they when they were agreeing to pay for crying out loud? And you ask yourself the question, how much is this minimum wage? Is there a governor who's been owing, who's been owed salaries? I'd like to see his hands up if there's a governor who would say that he's been owed salaries. They don't get to owe governor salaries. They don't owe deputy governor salaries. You don't owe commissioner salaries. So why would you owe the Nigerian worker? It's really sad. And I think government, when we talk about government, I know government is you and I. But the people who are at the helm of affairs holding this country by the jugular, they need to come together and talk about the issues having to do with the Nigerian worker. Yes, I know that some say that the civil service is over bloated. I still ask the question, why do you keep recruiting? Yes, some have recruited before some government came into office, but government never stops. It's got, you continue from where the other man stopped as soon as you come into office. If you want to shed weight, why don't you shed weight? Then you make the environment conducive for people to thrive with the small businesses that they decide to set up. This is the only country where I see that a lot of people want to run into the civil service because they believe that whether they work or not, the salaries will come. But it shouldn't be like that. We need to also begin to think about the idea of paying people per hour. I think it's possible. That way people will get serious. What have you put into the job that you're doing? You clock in at this hour. There are cameras watching you. Are you doing the job for which you were employed in the very first place? Now, when people are paid by the hour, they will understand what it is to not sit down and wait to get paid after 30 days. So these issues need to be looked at. We need to sit down, look at it holistically, and decide where to move from here. But if you ask me, that thing that we call the minimum wage, it doesn't even take them to the bus stop, not to talk of taking them home. Do you think about how they pay their rent? how they feed their children, how they clothe themselves, clothe their children, and even pay their fees as it is. The Nigerian worker is not really getting what he deserves. And when I say he, it's all inclusive. We need to look at it again and exactly do the right thing. I do hope that we do, uh, do the right things, I mean, all the time, Ify. Uh, let's take a look at the cover story of The Punch today, which has to do with health. A federal government vaccine fund runs into crisis as AstraZeneca scarcity hits India. We hear that uh, another paper puts it, I think, uh, the, uh, the Daily Times, uh, or the other paper says that Nigeria may have to settle for uh, Pfizer, which is $20 a dose, uh, to AstraZeneca, which is $4 a dose. We also hear the WHO is worried about possibility of having in circulation uh, some expired COVID-19 vaccine. Ify, what's on your mind? I'm scared. That's the truth. I can't wait to go take my second dose. And I did say, I raised that um, sentiment at some point to say, I just hope we don't find fakes or substandard things coming into Nigeria in the name of vaccines as it is now is the time for i'm sick and tired of talking about government waking up that's the truth we don't have to keep reminding them that they need to be up and doing when we talk about their responsibility navdak needs to wake up now madam adeye needs to truly shine her eyes let me use that language that we use in the local parlance you know she needs to wake up and understand that the responsibility rests on her shoulders now to be able to decipher what it is that's coming into Nigeria. We need to wake up. All the bad things don't have to end up here. And if government needs to spend money to get the real deal for Nigerians to take this so that people can, you know, be safe from what it is that might hit them if they come down uh, or if they get infected uh, with, with uh, uh, COVID-19, I pray that doesn't happen. But the idea is for us to be 10 steps ahead 
of what it is that's going on. I saw videos about what's happening in India and my heart broke. I have a couple of uh, colleagues who live there. I have family members who live there. I have friends who have worked here in Nigeria. They are Indians and they've gone back. During this COVID-19 period, their companies folded up and they had to go back to India. I've been in touch with them to say, I hope you're okay, because I see the way people are dropping, you know, passing out on the streets. This is not what we need to see. And I just hope that uh, we don't get to that stage here in Nigeria. Uh, we need to wake up as a people and truly be on our guards. That's the truth. Numbers are at the bottom of the screen. If you want to join the conversation on News Hub, you are free to do so. Make sure you listen carefully to the call handlers when you're passed through every instruction important. Very importantly, turn off your TV and go to a quiet place so we don't get the feedback uh, once you're connected uh, to us. So if you, almost all the dailies have the story, the biggest story online over the weekend, which was um, the young lady, Nio Bonga Umoren, who decided to put her um, job-seeking um, um, initiative online and then um, she got contacted and the story unfortunately from then on went downhill. Um, she got contacted and then lost her life unfortunately sexually assaulted, physically assaulted. I mean we, we've not seen that sort of aerial bombardment on the digital trail of anyone to track someone like it happened on social media over uh, the weekend. Sad isn't it? Very, very sad. That's what I woke up, you know, talking about this morning. I made a post this morning about it, I think at about 5.30 or 6. You know, I woke up, I saw the story. All through last night, I was reading about this young girl. People were posting things. That child, that girl could have been my child. That's the truth. Maybe my first or second child, as it is, if all things were equal. You know, could be anybody's child. A child went through school. I saw a picture of her right in front of I think uh, something uh, in her school, the school where she went to, and she put on her T-shirt all the things she had to go through, the services, the courses, and everything to say, look, now I have run the race. I, I, I've, I've reached the end of that race. I breast the tape, and it's time for me to step up and get a job. Then she ends up in an early, shallow grave. It is sad. Anything short of saying that that is sad I think that will be so, so not nice to that little girl. I'm just hoping that um, the gentleman who every finger is pointing at now is made to face the music. And I'm just praying that nobody comes out from anywhere to go to bed. We have a, a habit in Nigeria where you have people come out from all sorts of places shamelessly going to beg the authorities to say, what has happened has happened. Don't let's have two deaths on our hands. I just think that uh, the law needs to take its course. The gentleman needs to face the full wrath of the law, and he needs to face it as fast as anyone can think of. Because who knows what that child should have been? That could have been the very first female president of this country. Then you snuff life out of her. All she did wrong was wanting to work. If he, that, that, that man was, he's nothing. In fact, it could report. be every other thing, but not a gentleman. Just as Algo said in the house, a monster, a better way to really, really, you know, uh, describe mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. he did. And we heard, according That's to very the report, that uh, there were possibility of him to have been involved in prior involvement in things like that. So how do we uh, now separate, because many people have got uh, jobs online. Most of the time you put your uh, CV uh, online and you get, in fact, this is maybe one of the very few times when we would hear uh, things like this. How then do we protect ourselves, especially those who are seeking jobs this morning and whose CVs are there online? Uh, it, it may change everything. Yes, it will change everything. Two jobs that I've held, you know, as management staff, it's been with people that I never knew of course, it's been referral. This is a woman who can get to do the job. And they call me up to say, we need to have this meeting with you. It could be a phone conversation. What do you need to come do this job for us? And we reel it out. Yes, I know you'll get to that stage where people need to call you to bring your expertise uh, to the table and come turn things around in their organizations. But for young people who are just starting out in life, you've got to be careful. All these messages flying all over the place. 
you can imagine at this stage, I still get those crazy messages. And I wonder, where did they get my number from? I never applied for any job. And you say to people, and there's one location in Iketa. I don't understand why the police has not even gone to bust that place. You send people messages to come to somewhere in Ikeja or Kwebi or something and that they've been um, offered employment, they should come for interview and all of that. People who never applied for jobs. Okay, maybe this young girl applied now. They invited her and she just went. Young people need to understand that sometimes when you see something, it is too good to be true. You've got to be careful. Let people know where you're going. Be vigilant when you get there. And when you get there, your mind tells you this is not the right place to be. It's important for you to quickly take a walk. Why would you follow the man to his house for crying out loud? I heard he took her to his house. It just doesn't make any sense. But it is wrong for us to start to blame the child for going and following someone to his house. That's beyond that now. But people need to understand, you have to be very careful. You've got to be very vigilant. Ask questions. If there is a number, when you are invited, call that number and probe. You need to find out more before you take a step uh, and go into that place. All right, so num numbers at the bottom of the screen, please do call in. You can also talk to us on Twitter. Uh, we're live on Twitter at uh, SilverBedN24, hashtag news. I would love to hear from you. The big stories this morning uh, the, as they continue to unravel. Let's um, take a look at the other dailies we have before us this morning. Uh, we have next up the Nigerian Tribune. Nigerian Tribune has got the story saying that um, if you're interested to know exactly how much Nigeria is owing China from the debt management office, stands at 3.7 billion US dollars. Mm? 3.7 billion dollar US dollars. You read up and find out uh, just how this debts. Uh, the, how they are spread out, spread out and what Nigeria's repayment plans are from the debt uh, management office. Outrage over rape murder of a quiet bomb job seeker. It's a big story in all the dailies. Uh, police intercept 13 guns and uh, 753 general purpose machine guns and uh, ammunition in a boring state. There's a story about the gunmen raising the iron office in a quiet bomb state. And then uh, this one. Sonny Ferry justified for not supporting uh, Fasun Roti at his um, supporting Buhari, Fasun Roti says, at his 70th bet, uh, birthday. And um, there you have a number of stories to look at. Final consensus on fuel subsidies or business analysis. We get the stories and more Nigerian Tribune. I understand we have a call coming in from Lagos. Ebuka, great to have you join us this morning on News Hub. Chaku Maku. Hey, Makushi. Thank you very much. I appreciate uh, I congratulate you to once again, like the opening speech you said, passing information to the people for them to be informed. Yeah. And if he, if he pointed out something again, something about how you analyze and package your news, then getting to the end users, um, like where it really happened, you know, people will say, you will use one side of the story to conclude to judge. I appreciate that very point. Then, I think you people should be making your headlines so strong that when these social media guys bring up whatever thing, it means that play your own side of the story. Because the thing that people are lazy to read the points, go to read the whole article. Because when they read it from the beginning, they will be, seeing, they will be wondering who side are these guys supporting. So if the headlines will be carrying the strong point, I think this issue of fake news and whatever thing that is playing your own news will be put aside. And this ends end this equal that is just restraining you people from, you know, passing this message across the people. They should receive their school. Because I don't see the reason why you're talking about freedom of speech and you're not allowing people to get the details. So I appreciate you people once again. I don't know, and when I go to me on radio stations, I see how you people, you know, dig down to the story to give us what we got to hear. God bless you people. Thank you. I've got to appreciate you people. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much, um, Ebuka. All right. Now, um, uh, thank you, Ebuka. Let's now take a look at the front page of the Guardian newspaper today. Uncertainty as TFAC foreign travel protocols begin today. 
and then there are writers to the story, stakeholders, query travel banned from India, Brazil, Turkey over COVID-19. Airlines face $3,500 fine per defaulting passenger. A decision hasty, not based on data, says Tom Murray. Experts rally government to rapid testings at Lagos, Abuja Airport. Uh, that story uh, inside the Guardian newspaper today continues when you turn to page two of the paper. And also you have uh, other stories here. Gunmen kill Kogi Penkom chief of Duck's local government uh, bus. And then the FIME canvases recruitment of 200,000 personnel for military and police. Also you find this one, Nigeria can't afford another civil war to know who wants. And, so many, and then this one, BBC documentary exposes pension corruption in Cross River. You can get the details on page two of The Guardian on Monday. All right. Um, from The Guardian, let's see the business day. Business day, so I got this story here. A curious case of less viable states uh, consuming more petrol. What are they using the petrol for? I'm sure you, if you want to find out. Uh, I'm, also, I'm also interested and curious myself to wonder how states that don't have any business going on are spending more fuel uh, than the states which are uh, thriving more. But let's speak with Innocent. Innocent is calling us from River State and wants to comment on any of the headlines that has caught your interest. Innocent, please go ahead. Innocent, please go on. in Nigeria to threaten innocent people. Our DSS cannot go out and find out people who are killing Nigerians every day. If you open radio, it's killing. You open television, it's killing. Your friend, you call your friend in any city, is afraid of killing of everything. DSS are there at the academy center's job. They cannot find out the people who are killing innocent people in this country. What they will do is to be threatening innocent Nigerians who are living in fear every day. That they should know that God's judgment will cut them very soon. If they have not known, they should know that whatever happened in Nigeria, government is, God is going to pay this government. From the beginning to the end, they will be paid for killing Nigerians and threatening Nigerians. You will slap somebody, you will slap a child and tell the child not to cry. You will call to a, a man with a knife, you will tell him not to bleed. See, even the minister in said that Nigeria is bleeding. It's where they are coming, even threatening pastors. Tell them, let, I'm sure they're hearing me. God of heaven, who created them, we will we catch them and their families very soon. As the Lord has said, they say, we put tears in Nigeria and put pens in Nigeria and say Nigeria will not speak out. God of heaven will catch them and their family. They will face their doom very soon. Mm -hmm. I think they are in government. God of heaven, they have gone. Jesus has gone. Where they go to catch them, other people, they cannot go after the criminals. They find it. Nigeria is here threatening people. And after threatening, they scoot what they do. Where is Jesus? Mm -hmm. Where is Jesus right. going to catch them? Okay, thank you, Innocent. Thank you so much for your submission this morning. You know the way our viewers do react. Are you, are you yeah. done with the, with the front yeah, story Yeah, we're done with the business uh, uh, So to speak, let's take a look at the uh, uh, Daily Independence, just one or two stories there. The biggest story here, banks, non-performing loans. There's MPLs escalate amid growth in, gro in gross loans to 20.48 trillion naira. And INEX says rising insecurity may affect 2023 elections. Government key policemen in Fresh Point Station attack, and we hear that uh, the, the writer there killed Kogi Commissioner, Dr. Uh, local government chairman. That's one of the very big stories uh, also on Sunday. Um, Sarah drags federal government to ECOWAS court over MBC code. You can get the details on page four. And BP offers five NEEP Jenkos for sale. Why? Turn to page, page four. So many other stories uh, inside uh, the Daily Independent today. Ify, let's, uh, of course, you can make your calls. All right. Ify, we'll come back to you in a very moment, very short moment. We do have Olumba calling us from Imo State. Olumba, so nice to have you on Isa. Yeah, good morning. Good morning, Olumba. Yeah, well, on um, APC, PDP, clashing over worsening insecurity. Uh, I, I want to believe that in a senate crime, APC shouldn't be here. In a senate crime, uh, as a ruling party, uh, you know, uh, APC should just go and bury fair, you know, in shame, and not come out to join issues with anybody. 
Because they made promises that, you know, of a good governance when PDP was there. Now they have taken over and things are getting from what start. You know, what to what start, if there's any word like that. Nigeria can no longer travel on the road. Nigeria can no longer go to farms. Abuja is even a two, uh, uh, you know, on a train, two hour drive from uh, 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 Niger State. And then they are coming to tell us to talk. Nigeria can no longer do anything. Why, what is leadership all about? Why can't people demand for good governance? You know, Melaki are talks, we are attacking. Let me, for Ambaka talks, we are attacking. Uh, Bishop Cook are talks, we are attacking. Professor Wallace, only the APC sees it that Nigeria is not thinking. When the nation is not thinking, you know, so please, nobody should come out to tell us anything about APC anymore. And they shouldn't come out to tell us anything. It's a shame that the APC is still talking. When the nation bombs, they have mm. no policy at all. There is no future for Nigeria. And the APC is still talking. If you find your number from all over, have a pleasant day in Lagos. All right. Um, th thank you very much, Ifa Olumba. Uh, uh, should we have a question for um, Ifi? Yeah, Ifi. Actually, I was thinking that we should talk about the issue of a uh, planned hike in electricity tariff coming in July. Uh, the federal government had planned to do that June, uh, January this year, but for so many hues and cries from different quarters. What's your view uh, on that? I don't even know where to start from. The... <laughs> Nigeria has just been hit left, right, and center. My sister-in-law came home the other day and said to me, do you know what it is, how much things cost in the market? I said, of course I know. Sometimes I step out to buy things. And you wonder, there's this tariff, this one is coming at the, at, at the Nigerian, that one is coming and all of that. Now you're talking about hike in electricity tariff. What do you want us to do? I just hope that someday you wake up and there wouldn't be people for you to govern anymore because that's the stage where we're going. I'm so afraid that we might now fall back. Remember when it was that Nigerians used to go about to pick food from the dustbin, if you understand. There were people who were practically opening the trash cans of other people to take leftover food from there. I'm afraid that that's the road, that's the path that we're dancing on and I'm hoping that we don't get there. Why are you increasing tariffs for crying out loud? Now, we just talked about people who have said that they're not able to pay the minimum wage. I hear of people who have said to the, the power holding company, please just cut it off, take your life, we don't want it. That's how they say it. And they cut themselves off, off and they only stay on with their generating sets. Now, for those who decide to stay on the grid, you're saying that you're going to increase tariff. How are they going to push on that effect? It's really sad, Shimon. And that's the least that I can say. It's very sad. Where do we go from here? That's the question. Because we keep asking, how did we get here? I keep asking that question. But we're here already. How do we get out of the speech that we're in? That's the conversation that we need to begin to have as a people. Before we let you go, there's an addendum to the COVID-19 uh, story. This time not with the vaccine, but what is going on at the airport. Uh, there have been new rules, mm. protocols. There's an ongoing debate whether to ban flights coming in from India, Turkey, countries which have seen recent spikes. And it uh, appears that it's beginning to be an idea what would happen in the COVID days. But it's going to spell chaos at the airport going by what we see in terms of what they intend to do. Reduced by uh, 24 hours, it becomes 72 hours for those PCR test results. Um, if you're coming in from India, you're a foreigner, you may not be able to get access to this country if you've been on transit. So many things going on. W what are your thoughts? My thoughts? I just think the government should just go ahead. Those countries where things have really gone so bad now, if you need to ban the flights coming in from there, please go ahead and ban those flights so that we're not caught naping again as it is. You know what it is? When things go bad, we will not be able to cushion the effect of what is likely to happen. So it's best to start now, early. It's still early in the day. Government needs to do what it needs to do. Ban the flights coming from there, whatever it's going to take. People who come from, I don't know how it's going to be. Why you don't, why you're even thinking about it in the very first place? Do the right thing so that you can secure the lives of your own citizens. That, that's my own, uh, uh, that's my own opinion as it is. Government needs to do what it has to do because the lives of the people should be more important and paramount when we talk about uh, governance in this country. 
All right, journalist, author, Ifeo Yebule, it's always a pleasure to have you on News Hub. Thank you for having me this morning. All right, have a beautiful week. You're still watching News Hub, and uh, well, we know that so many other things are coming up on the show. Right, right. It's the label discussion we're going to have. We have a fine array of guests, and so just sit back and watch. Up next is News Update. Please stay with us.